Hey everyone, Christian here, and this is going to be a vlog about how to tell the difference between a true date versus other dates. So here we are in downtown Venice, well, we're on the island in Venice, downtown's about a mile away. And you can see that all of these uh, dates are planted in the median. They're actually on both sides of the road here once you start getting down by, this is the hospital, this is uh, Venice's old hospital. They built a new one. I should actually do a vlog there because they have a lot of cool uh, plantings. Nothing amazing, but worth vlogging. So I chose this one because it was a little bit off the road. Um, it's rush hour. I didn't want to risk dying there in the median. I didn't think that was the best way to go out. So uh, this is going to be a true date. Venice planted these sometime right before I moved here in 2004. And each one of these palms, and there's, there are dozens of them, they start all the way at the, when you get on the island about a mile and a half. There's, there's some breaks, but they spent $4,500 a palm. And I think that was before installation. So this one here actually isn't the best one. It's, I don't know if there were others around here because it's, it's not symmetrical. This is the only one in the area. Uh, usually they're, they're planted either in the median as a row or they're planted on each side of the road, north and south. But this one was the easiest to kind of get back and get a look at without being near the airport with having uh, planes overhead. So there, there was a lot of controversy as to why this palm was planted, why they chose these expensive palms. And really what it comes down to is Phoenix, for a cold hardy palm in size, it's, it has the most regal appearance, in my opinion, of all Phoenix. And that's something you kind of have to, it's some kind of a sort of a subconscious feel that you'll get when you are looking at palms saying, okay, this, this palm is, you know, has this, it's not, uh, it's not just a massive plant, but it has just enough of a uh, presence to kind of have that feeling of, uh, I don't know, it's the classiest of them all, if you ask me. Like the Canariensis is too big, Sylvester's just too laid back, and Reclinata's just too lazy. So, <laughs> anyway, you can see in the trunk that it is quite knobby from the, the bases of the fronds. Now, the, the last little bit will come off here, and let me get a little bit closer. You can actually see the old rotted fruit here um, and I'll get to that in a second and I have done a video on why the fruit rots but you can see just how worn this is I mean it, some of it will come off it's kind of it's kind of like a uh, somewhere in between cork and old bark and uh, it will come off if you try and peel it but this one gets stuff obviously gets a lot of water uh, canariensis would not have the knobs on the trunk it would basically be flush they're usually cut like that um, or when they eventually fall off which takes a very long time uh, Sylvester's will have more of a petiole left so it would kind of be like Sylvester's, Sylvester's would be the would leave the most uh, base of a, of a uh, frond off then Dactylifera here then Canariensis would leave much you just cause kind of see a diamond cut and you you can get that done you can have these like kind of sawed off so they, they look cleaner but this is the natural uh, pretty much the natural look. They're gonna break off like that. And the root base here is, uh, you know, it's 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 quite extensive. It's gonna be more underneath. And this, a lot of people don't know this, but true dates will clump, and they will usually cut off the clumps to uh, encourage more growth from the main trunk. So from the fronds themselves, this is actually the best view you're gonna get to be able to see this. But if you notice the the pinnae or the leaflets are in two planes so they're bipinnate they're not multi-pinnate they're not in like three or more planes um like sylvestris and they're not curved so they're, they're they're quite flat so they, they do droop a little bit but they don't curve like sylvestris um and they hold a blue green color that is obviously very desirable let me back up here for a second all right and they're quite pointy looking as you can see Every, you know, everything about this palm makes it feel more archaic than it's than it's in the others in the genus you can see right there that this palm experienced some kind of rot that was probably at, at least 10 or 12 years ago these don't grow very fast compared to sylvestris or canariensis i believe grows even faster than dactylifera does so um, these are probably going to be 35 years old. I would say at least when they were planted, they were probably 15 to 20 years old. And that was about 20 years ago. So uh, regarding the fruit, now the fruit here, now these will fruit, uh, they will be uh, orange in color, but 
I have a video on why the fruit is no good here. It's because of the humidity in, uh, in Florida, in California, or Arizona, or the Middle East, or even the Mediterranean. Because of the lack of the humidity that we have here, the fruit, uh, the, the fruit will actually be edible. Now you can, you'll find dates in the stores, you can see how big the, the fruit is. And it's the largest fruit of the genus. So when you're looking for that, that's something else to look for when you're trying to find a true date. I can't really give you much of a, a gauge because the fruit is so rotted, I can't even find an old seed. But they're gonna be, uh, you know, they're gonna basically be an elongated, slightly ovoid shape, uh, a couple centimeters long, maybe maybe a centimeter wide at the most, maybe half a centimeter wide. and. A lot of these, you know, the old leaf bases, they will trim them, but they'll still hold there for a while. And this, that'll eventually peel off where the, the ferns are growing there. Let's see if they can get that more. Sorry, it's a little bit of a game of where am I gonna, where am I gonna step here? And those old leaf bases will, uh, will fall off and just leave these knobs here on the trunk. And that will happen with a lot, like I said, with a lot of the uh, Phoenix genus. Um, so there's all, obviously very sharp thorns. So if you find one of these that's, a, that's smaller, be careful. The thorns will, will end when the fronds begin. So if you want to like, you know, grab one of the fronds, always grab it by the end of the frond. Don't grab it by the beginning because if you get stuck with the phoenix frond, usually regardless of the species, it'll can cause an infection. It's very painful, about a week. I would not recommend it. Uh, it's, not, it's not very much fun. So really what to look for is that blue-green color, that kind of flat leaflet. Uh, bipinnate, so uh, pinnate going in two directions. And then they look kind of flat, but they sort of overlap each other, as you can see. And the, the very knobby trunk with a root base that can, usually is much larger. This is uh, atypical. It's actually smaller than most. You'll see a big root base, especially if it's being irrigated. Now, I don't see any signs of irrigation here. These don't require irrigation, nor do they want a lot of water in their crown, which is what they get. And they are susceptible to a lot of diseases. So... When you're looking for a true date, look for these uh, look for these aspects in the palm. So I hope that that was helpful. I hope that the traffic wasn't too loud. So if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel and you want to see more uh, vlogs about palms and other tropical plants, please subscribe, hit the like button, uh, hit the bell notification. You can see when I either go live or when I put up a new, um, new video. And I will see everyone next time. Thanks for watching.